In this presentation, we will discuss some gate problems related to equivalence relations. So let's get started. Let's discuss problem one. Let R be a non-empty relation on a collection of sets defined by A R B if and only if A intersection B is equal to five. Then you have to pick the true statement out of these statements. Okay. This question has been asked in gate 1996. I would encourage you to pause the video for a while and try to answer this question on your own. I hope you're done. Okay, let's move on to the solution. It is given that R is a non-empty relation on a collection of sets. Okay, this relation is defined on a collection of sets and it is defined by A R B if and only if A intersection B is phi. So it is clear that R is a relation that is A R B if and only if A intersection B is phi. A intersection B equal to phi means there must not be any common element between A and B. Okay. Let's see the first option. It is given that R is reflexive and transitive. Let's see whether this option is correct or not. For this, we will check whether R is reflexive or not. Let's check the reflexivity. According to reflexive property, A must be related to A, right? A must be related to A. This means A intersection A must be phi, which is obviously not possible, right? Therefore, R is not reflexive. It is clear that relation R is not reflexive. It is not possible that A intersection A is phi. No, it is not. You are talking about the intersection of A with itself, how it can be phi, right? So, it is clear that R is not reflexive. Hence, option A is straight away not the correct option. Now, let's see option B. Here you can see that it is given that R is symmetric and not transitive. Let's check whether R is symmetric or not. For this, a must be related to B implies B must be related to A. This means if A is related to B, then B must be related to A. Now, if A is related to B, then this means A intersection B must be phi. This is according to the definition. A is related to B if and only if A intersection B is phi. Therefore, this statement can be replaced by A intersection B equal to phi. Similarly, we can replace B R A by B intersection A equal to phi. Now, the overall statement is A intersection B equal to phi implies B intersection A equal to phi and let me tell you this is true. Obviously, you are just changing the order, right? Here, if we say that A intersection B is phi, then B intersection A has to be phi, right? Therefore, R is symmetric, okay? It seems like option B is correct, but we have to check this part of this option as well. That is, R is not transitive. If R is not transitive, then we can clearly say that option B is the correct option. Let's see the transitivity. A related to B and B related to C implies A related to C. Now, what do we mean by A R B? A R B means A intersection B must be phi. B R C means B intersection C equal to phi. And A R C means A intersection C equal to phi. So, what we are saying is A intersection B equal to phi and B intersection C equal to phi implies A intersection C equal to phi. Let me tell you, this need not be true, although it seems like this is always correct, but this need not be true. Let's see why with the help of an example. Let's take one example. Let's say we have set A which consists of these elements 1, 2, 3. We have set B which consists of these elements 4 and 5. And we have set C which consists of these elements 1 and 2. Now, let's just find out whether A is related to B or not. You can see that A is related to B because A intersection B is phi, right? And B is also related to C, isn't that so? Because here you can see in B we have these elements 4 and 5 and in C we have 1 and 2. Obviously, B intersection C is phi, right? Therefore, B is related to C. But what about A and C? Is A related to C? You can see that there are common elements between A and C. Therefore, A intersection C is not phi, right? If A intersection B is phi and B intersection C is phi, then it is not necessary that A intersection C will also be phi. Therefore, R is not transitive. So, it is clear that option B is the correct option, right? R is symmetric and not transitive. Now, let's see problem 2. Suppose A is a finite set with n elements. The number of elements in the largest equivalence relation of A is what? This question has been asked in gate 1998. Again, I would encourage you to pause the video for a while and try to answer this question on your own. I hope you are done. Okay, let's move on to the solution. 
It's quite a simple problem. Here it is written that A is a finite set with n elements. Okay, so we are given with this information that A is a finite set. Also, it consists of n elements. The number of elements in the largest equivalence relation of A is what? We have been asked that how many elements are there in the largest equivalence relation of A. Now this is quite simple. Let me tell you the largest equivalence relation of set A is A cross A. There is no doubt about this. Largest equivalence relation of set A is Cartesian product of A with itself. If A has n elements, then A cross A will have n square elements. This is also true, right? We have already learned this. If A has n elements, then A cross A will have n square elements. Therefore, it is clear that option B is straight away the correct option. Largest equivalence relation of A is A cross A. We know that A has n elements. Therefore, A cross A must have n square elements. So, it is clear that option B is correct option, right? Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation.